Okay, hopefully I can speak clearly enough that you guys can hear me over the uh, the unit heater out here in the garage. Um, so yesterday I had the brilliant idea to mount the snow plow on this old John Deere 212. <clears throat> um, the only unfortunate thing is I had forgotten I never hooked up one of the front implements on this thing correctly in the past. Uh, last winter I did in fact have the snowblower mounted on this but I never had the linkage connected, the lift linkage connected up on it. I just had a come along wrapped around the uh, the side of the tractor to, to uh, hoist it up. Uh, since it was going to stay at a constant height anyways it was a non-issue. So that wasn't really an issue in itself until last night's project that I thought was going to take 30 minutes and be done wound up turning into an absolute three ring circus. <clears throat> what I didn't realize since this is one of the tractors I've not gone over very effectively or haven't gone over very thoroughly yet I did not realize that this uh, yoke was still attached to uh, the lift um, crank arm or whatever you want to call it. Now normally that wouldn't be an issue but the problem was the pin the pin that goes through it here was rusted solid in this yoke. Uh, and this whole mechanism is basically up underneath the belly of the tractor basically right down under here mounted between the frame rails up underneath the uh, the sheet metal essentially in a very inhospitable location so I, I know all of us have been there it's it sucks when something that's supposed to take 30 minutes winds up turning into a frustrating hour or two hour or not at all project. And I don't know about the rest of you, but if I know something is going to be super, super hard, I can get myself into, or most of the time, I can get myself into a mindset that I can tolerate it. But when I expect something to go super easy, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, and not be, you know, a big deal, and it winds up turning into this sort of thing, that's when I just about lose my shit. And I don't know if any of the rest of you are, are like that, but that's where I start to have problems. But anyways, I, uh, I finally obviously did, in fact, get this equipment out, or the mechanism out, but I need to take some time. I need to go through and clean up all of the uh, affected hardware so that it operates correctly. It will come loose when it needs to come loose. I uh, spent a little bit of time freeing up this part so that it would rotate on the, uh, on the shaft. Um, you know, that sort of thing. So what I've done, we haven't gotten a ton of snow yet. But what I've done in the meantime is I've got the snow plow just lifted up off the ground. Oh, I guess it's sagged a little bit. It's just barely off the ground right now. But with this uh, ratchet strap here, <clears throat> uh, just to uh, be able to get it out and move a little bit of snow around. Uh, so, my next project is to take some cable and produce some linkage that will be super quick and super easy to get from uh, the lift crank arm up to the uh, lifting mechanism on the blade. Now, 
I think I may actually have the correct parts to do this with. And this is only part of the equation here. Um, there's also... It's a really, really peculiar setup that they utilize on this thing. And it's one of those things I do not like at all. But uh, this is on the front of the tractor and it mounts something like that. So this part mounts to the front uh, structure of the, the frame of the tractor. This obviously is the lift linkage and then this has a goofy looking almost massive bicycle chain link sort of thing that actually attaches to the lift mechanism of the plow and in my opinion that's just a ridiculous amount of garbage to go through just to lift the plow so I experimented last year on the 210 with using a piece of cable and it was a very it was a cruder mechanism than what I'm going to do uh, this go around. This go around I'm going to make something that's a little bit more permanent. But I just, I can't see, I mean I could easily fabricate this this uh, whole nonsense, but why? I mean, I, I, I don't like it. It's, 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 a, it's a crummy idea. I mean, there's, there's a lot of those crummy ideas on, on some of these garden tractors, but what I think I can do in 20 minutes by throwing together a piece of cable, I, I, I think is going to be way, way better. Uh, so let me give you a quick rundown of what it is I plan to do. So I'm going to reuse this yoke. And what I'm going to wind up doing is taking this cable... wrapping it around the yoke like so. I mean, this is really stiff cable, so obviously it'll be cinched up quite a bit more, and I'll put a thimble on it, you know, that whole sort of thing. But that will allow me to make this a quick disconnect sort of thing, like it's supposed to be. Whereas before, when I did it on the 210, I just put my thimble and cable right through like that, and it was a pain in the ass to set up. I mean, it was just a test run. But it was a pain in the ass to set up and, you know, not very easy to remove. In fact, I wound up just cutting the cable to remove it, you know, after last season. So trying to come up with something a little bit more permanent. But anyways, I just, uh, you know, it's one of those frustrating things, you know. And for anybody that's not familiar with the John Deere 200 series machines, these, uh, links here this is where your deck lift attaches so I believe this serves double duty it can either go to lift the attachment on the front or it can go rearward and be used to lift whatever attachments go on the rear I think now don't quote me on that I've, I've never had a rear attachment on one of the John Deere's and um, then this is the linkage that actually goes to and from the uh, lift arm. So anyways, that's going to be my little project for the day. And it's going to take more than 30 minutes. So I'm going to probably finish up this video, get out of the rubber boots, because they don't do well on the cold concrete. Uh, take a break and then come back out here and actually start in on this project. But there is one more little thing. After shooting yesterday's video, I realized that this particular phone doesn't lend itself very well to uh, handheld operation. When I was walking around the garage with it after reviewing the, uh, the video, I could tell that it was 
you know, shaking around like crazy. So it dawned on me that I need to get some sort of permanent tripod that I can move around more easily than uh, the thing I've got it, the can't, or the phone mounted on right now. My uh, the previous phone that I was using, oh let's just say it met its demise. Uh, it, it, it's an old old phone. I've been fighting with it, not working correctly for I don't know months. And I finally just totally lost my temper with it a couple weeks ago and smashed the damn thing because I just couldn't take it anymore. And, you know, it's one of those things. I can upgrade a computer. That's no problem. But these, uh, these Android operating systems, it just never works out for me to try and upgrade or make anything, modernize it and make it right. So, anyways, hopefully... Um, as, as slowly as I'm getting through my projects, it probably won't be as quick as I want it to, but hopefully before long, I'll start to be mounting this phone on that tripod. Possibly using this arm here that I've already got uh, configured that I've been suspending from the ceiling. So... Hopefully there won't be a whole lot more of me doing handheld type uh, video, video top, videoing. How about that? So anyways, I'm going to cut the video off here, go upload it and chill out for a little while and then regain my composure and come back for some more.